Hey guys, we're going to talk about uh, domain range increasing, decreasing, and x and y intercepts. So we're going to talk about quite a bit with graphs today. So for the function below, we got to figure out domain, range, we'll talk about our intercepts, and then finally we'll talk about where the function is increasing and decreasing. I've talked in class about how you're going to write a lot of this. We're going to use something called interval notation, which remember has to do with uh, using a bracket or a parentheses. So a quick review on when you use a bracket and when you use a parentheses. If the end point or the end is a point that is filled in, you're going to use a bracket. Anytime you have an arrow and it's continuing on forever, you're going to use a parentheses. Or if you have an open circle, you're going to use parentheses. So end points, brackets, open circles, or arrows, you're going to use parentheses. So <clears throat> I've drawn a graph on our graph paper here. Let's start with the domain. The domain only cares about the x values. It's wondering what are all the possible x values of this function that it takes in. So on the left side, the leftmost we can go on the x-axis is to negative 7. Okay, So we're looking at the leftmost point we can go, which is negative 7. And that is a filled-in circle, <clears throat> so it'll be negative 7. If you go to the right side, the rightmost I could go is this point over here. So the leftmost is at when x is negative 7, the rightmost is when we're at this point here. And we care only about the x values here. We don't care about y. So the leftmost is when x is negative 7. The rightmost is when x is positive 7. And that is a filled-in point, so I'm going to put a bracket there. So domain, <clears throat> leftmost point, rightmost point, okay? Because we're only caring about the x-axis, which moves us left and right. So leftmost point, rightmost point, negative 7, positive 7. Then we have range, which is going to worry about <clears throat> y values. The y-axis goes up and down, so we're going to worry about the lowest point we can go and the highest point we could go. So for range, we're going to worry about lowest and highest. The lowest we could possibly go is this point right here, which we're concerned about y when y is negative 2. The highest most point we can go on this graph is when y is 6. So my range is going to be from negative 2 to 6. Again, the mix-up most kids have is domain is for x, range is for y. Only focus on x, left and right for domain and only focus on y, bottom to top for y. Next, we have x-intercepts and y-intercepts, which they're pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to talk over them. Um, x-intercepts is at any point where my graph crosses the x-axis. So at any point, my graph crosses the x-axis. You could have one, you could have none, and or you could have several, okay? Uh, in this case, we only cross the x-axis at this point down here. So all I have to do is name the coordinates of this point. So we cross right here, which is at when x is at negative 6, and I want the full coordinate, and y is 0. So negative 6, 0 is my x-intercept. The other piece I'm going to worry about is y-intercept. So at any point, my graph crosses the y-axis. Well, that's going to happen at this point right here. It's actually in between two. This is when x is 0 and y is, that looks like a 4.5. And that is my y-intercept. The final thing we're going to talk about is increasing and decreasing. So where is my function increasing or decreasing? Here's how I tackle that. Um, when you look at your graph, you're going to trace it with your finger from moving from the left side to the right side. So just like how we read. So moving from the left side to the right side. If I start on the leftmost point of my graph and I just start tracing it, notice my finger goes up and then it starts coming down. In other words, I am increasing, going up, and then at some point I start decreasing and coming down. So all we have to do is we just have to write the interval in which we are increasing and in the interval we are decreasing. But here's the catch. For increasing and decreasing, 
we only care about at what x values are we increasing or decreasing at. So I start increasing down here when x is at negative 7. So we start de increasing at this point. So x is negative 7. As I move to the right, I stop increasing once I reach this high point right here. So from here to here, I'm increasing. This is when x is negative 7. And I finally hit this peak, and that's when x is negative 3. So from negative 7 to negative 3, that's the interval in which I'm increasing. So from this point to this point. Only thing I have to do is just write down, well, now when I'm decreasing. So I hit this point, and once I make the turn, I'm decreasing the whole way down. So I start at this point, which is when x is negative 3. And then I decrease, 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 decrease till this point here, when x is at positive 7. So the tough part with increasing and decreasing is you only care about x. A lot of kids will get trapped into talking about y. We don't care about where we are at on the y-axis. Just from what x value to what x value. The same with decreasing. What x value to what x value are you decreasing? Okay. That was a quick review on domain, range, increasing, decreasing, and x and y intercepts.